This morning in the Eagle Studio, we have the president of the Valley Motorsports Association with us, Chris Undra is here. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. We're excited to have you, and we're excited about the Dead Horse Creek Speedway, and I'm sure we're not the only ones that are pumped about this. Yeah, the, <laughs> we're, we're getting a lot of buzz in the community, and people are really excited about uh, seeing the Speedway get restarted again. And so the Valley Motorsports Association is probably also something that folks, you know, haven't heard about. This is something that's new. Talk about what this group is. Yeah, it's pretty new. Um, so there's a there's a group of us who are like-minded. We call ourselves grassroots uh, motorsports enthusiasts. And uh, we got together in February and started talking about what we could do to promote motorsports in our community, but also just to promote community. And so there's, there's a couple different angles here, um, but, but basically we're all people who are are involved in and excited about motorsports and really want to to work in our community to join together to celebrate that. So we we met in February and we started talking about some of the things that we could do and one of the opportunities that came up was the former ALH Motor Speedway West of Morden. So that facility was started by Al Hildebrandt in 2008 and it operated from 20, 2009 to 2019 um, running weekly races every Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, it was a casualty of COVID uh, due to the restrictions they couldn't operate. And so the Speedway never uh, reopened after COVID. And it was a big loss to our community and especially to the, uh, to the racing community. So we, um, we talked to the new owners. The, the property had been sold um, uh, to be used with, for the gravel resources that are located on site. We talked to the new owners and the facility was still there. It hadn't been dismantled, had, nothing had been torn down. And they were really excited to hear about our interest. Um, they want, they wanted to see it operational and running, but they just didn't have the the time, the resources, or expertise to do that. So when we approached them, they were very, they were very grateful for our uh, our interests, and we made a deal with them to uh, to operate the speedway. So our approach is a little different in a couple ways. Uh, one is. We're going to run a couple of weekend specials instead of weekly races uh, every week. Uh, Our goal is to put on a couple of really, really well done events that are community focused, that bring people together for an experience for the whole family. Whether you like racing or not, there's going to be lots to do there. Um, Lots of entertainment and and lots to keep everyone, uh, keep everyone going. So, um, Basically, our focus will be putting on these these community events instead of the weekly series racing. This year, we're we're planning two events: mm-hmm. uh, the Watermelon Cup on July seventh and eighth, and the other event is the King of the Corn, coincides with the Corn and Apple Festival on August twenty fifth and twenty sixth. And so these are going to be really fun, family-friendly ones, and you guys can focus all your efforts on these two things throughout the summer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, we, the other thing that makes us a little different in how we're doing this mm-hmm. is we're not a for-profit organization. We're running as a non-profit. We're all volunteers. I'm volunteering my time. Everyone else is working on this is volunteering their time and resources and equipment. And our goal, in addition to putting bringing our community together from something that was lost due to COVID, we, we felt our, our community was really fractured due to COVID. We've lost a lot. We want to try and bring some of that back. But in addition to that, we're operating as a nonprofit with the goal and the intent of using this as a vehicle to raise funds for an important local cause. So this year we've chosen the Boundary Trails uh, Health uh, Hospital expansion as our cause. It's something that's near and dear to all of us. We all have a need for it or, or someday we'll have a need for it. Um, it's something that impacts every one of us. So that's the cause we've chosen for this year. We'd like to use this as a way to raise awareness and funds for that hospital expansion. And for me especially, it's become near and dear to my heart. Um, I had a a bad accident a few weeks ago and fell off the mezzanine in my shop and severely broke my arm. And I spent a week lying in a bed at the Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg. And the whole time I was just begging to get transferred back to Boundary because I know the kind of care that Boundary provides. And... um, and so for me, this is a really important cause. I'd like to see the hospital expanded in such a way that, that this kind of an injury could be dealt with there, where you could be cared for at home, close to uh, your loved ones and family who can help take care of you, and just the, the kind of care that our, our, our hospital staff gives here is just second to none. It's world class. So it's an important cause to all of us, and, and it's something that we want to use this sport, motorsport 
to uh, raise awareness and funds for. It's an exciting new future for the uh, Speedway there. And one of the things we weren't able to talk about on the radio is the name changes. Now it's called the Dead Horse Creek Speedway. Talk about where did this name come from? Yeah, so when we started looking at this project and thinking about how we wanted to to rebrand and, and, and just to signify that this is a little different than what it was before. We used to be, it used to be weekly racing. Now we're doing specials. It's, uh, this is community focused. It's nonprofit with, you know, this intent of raising funds for, for an important cause. We just wanted to do a bit of a rebrand. So we started looking at what the potentials could be for names. And, and we, when we looked around at geographical and, and geophysiological features, and um, we, we, you know, we found out that the, the site of the Speedway is actually pretty much right at the headwaters of the Dead Horse Creek. And so the Dead Horse Creek is a pretty important feature for a lot of us. It runs through Morden, comes up through Winkler Bible Camp. Um, it's a water feature that, that's served our area for a long, long time. And, and we, we use it for all sorts of different things as well. <laughs> so the Dead Horse Creek is pretty important to us here. And, and it's a pretty cool name too. Yes, it is. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And so if, if people want to kind of keep up with the Dead Horse Creek Speedway and see the events you guys are going on, uh, you, where can people keep up with you guys? Yeah, so we're on uh, social media, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Dead Horse Creek Speedway. And we also have a, web, a website, uh, deadhorsecreekspeedway.ca. And that's where people are going to get to go to see the event information, get tickets and all that type of stuff. Yeah, all the event information is there. Uh, we're going to be opening up to sell tickets probably next week. So we're not quite ready for that, but hopefully next week we'll have ticket sales uh, opening up online. We're excited about it, Chris. Thank you so much for coming in. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Hey, I'm Ronnie Gunther. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you have something going on in the community and you want to share it on the morning show, we'd love to have you. Send us an email at news at PeminaValleyOnline.com. If you like the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.